Hello, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, we're going to talk about the Kindle Security Operations Platform with AWS. Um, for those of you that may not be familiar with Kindle, um, despite our hosts this week, we are not an e-reader from Amazon. We're actually the de force from IBM. We used to be global technology services within IBM. We spun off almost two years ago now. And we are the largest managed service IT provider in the world in terms of revenue and, and probably employees. We have about 100,000 employees. Um, and I'm Dan Riley. Um, I am a data scientist. And so you know, you're going to hear a lot of marketing guys. I, I am the polar opposite of that, that um, I could excite you if you're a data guy, and I could put you to sleep if you're not. And, and hopefully, we'll keep this somewhere in the middle. We're going to jump in here. So I think this is important context. So as you heard this morning at the keynote, we are a launch partner for the Amazon Security Lake. And we went through a couple of uh, a beta and a preview in order to earn that right. And so you can see the Amazon Security Lake here. And what this really is, it is, I guess we're in Southern California, so we can't say cloud here. This is marine layer native um, storage for security data. And so what that does for us, it brings in, no matter who the vendor may be, brings in security data from disparate sources and centralizes them in S3 buckets and other Amazon technology. And part of the value there, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, is the, the long box. And I have a pointing device here. So the, you know, the force is strong with this one, although this is the worst Jedi robe you'll ever see. But this box right here, the third-party solutions using OCSF. And so what that is, the Open Cybersecurity Schema Framework, and you may have heard about that this morning as well. And so that normalizes what the naming conventions are for all of the data that goes into the Amazon Security Lake. And from a data guy, it's a huge difference maker that I've spent time earlier in my career doing that normalization manually from different sources of different types, putting it all together so we could do one set of analytics and those kinds of things. And so the fact that it's all normalized as it comes in is a world of difference. And so um, if I'm so excited about it. I've got another slide here as well that we talk about um, OCSF. And so this is what it is. And you can see a quote here from one of the Forrester analysts about how important she viewed it was in the industry. And I, I could not agree more. To give you a little bit of an appreciation, um, all the way at the far side there is just the very highest level of OCSF. So those are the categories and the classes. There's so much detail underneath this. In fact, what we're going to talk about today is only that one little lonely box under findings, specifically, specifically security findings. And so everything you'll see that we're going to talk about here is in that box but the whole framework exists for us to take advantage of as we develop this product. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Kindrel Bridge. So this is our open integration platform. And I know that, that sounds like uh, marketing words. What that really means is you can integrate it with a couple different ways. For our internal teams, we can build offerings on top of it. We can integrate our delivery with it. For customers, they can come in on a single pane of glass, see their entire um, all of their items through the control panel. And so it brings everything together from a, a, from a Kindle standpoint. You can provision services there. You can see services you already have. You can see partners, all, all of those kinds of things. Obviously, the intent of it is we want to deliver improved outcomes. We want to optimize work. And I'll talk a little bit about that in terms of the, the data science today. And then we also want to enable the businesses to scale. And that's really what, again, the, the marine layer is, is all about, or cloud. Um, but I think the thing that Kindle really brings to the table that's significantly different is the Kindrel expertise at the bottom. That we have, through our days with IBM and since, over 30 years of experience delivering IT services. And it, it makes a wonderful difference. And so what you'll hear me talk about today really is the fusion of AWS technology and Kindrel expertise. And that's quite a compelling uh, use case, as you'll see. So within Kindrel, we're broken up into global practices. And you'll see at the top in the, in the red here, um, those of, you or those of us presenting this week are part of the Security and Resiliency Global Practice. Um, I manage the data science team within the innovation part of that group. And so that's the expertise that we bring to the table. And so it's a very unique group. That, that my team, we call ourselves the, the Risk Science Squad. And, and the reason for that is we have deep data science technology expertise, but we also have the information security domain expertise. And that piece is absolutely critical. And so those of you who are in this business know the language of cybersecurity is risk. And so we look at turning everything into risk in order to make better decisions using that data. And so that's exclusively what the team that works for me does. So within Kindle Bridge, if you were to provision our services, you would come in and you would see this kind of a landing page. And again, you may say, 
you know, I'm looking for security and resiliency, and you could click here. And then, uh, you know, obviously, this is to, to draw your attention to the thing we're talking about today, but there would be a plethora of tiles there where you could see all of the services that we offer or that you've already purchased in the security and resiliency domain. And so for today, we're going to talk about the security operations platform. And so we'll focus in a little bit more on that. So this is a, um, in development, this was part of the proof of concept that we did, a screenshot from it. Um, the first thing I want to call out, I'd be remiss if I didn't, again, all, all Amazon technology that you're seeing here. So this is QuickSight. And specifically at the top here in this kind of teal bar is QuickSight Q. And what that allows you to do is use, uh, ask it natural language processing type questions. And so you could say, what are the key drivers to a certain metric using the, the OCSF framework? And it will give you a visualization that answers your question. And so it really gives us a, a quick way to answer ad hoc type of questions in addition to the pre-K and things that we're working with. Um, this particular use case is, is a relatively simple one. And so one thing I want to talk about a little bit more about my team, the key with having both the domain expertise and the data science expertise is that we care what problem is trying to be solved. And so I'm not going to sit here and drop buzzwords on you, AI and those kinds of things. What solution we pick will be dependent on the problem we're trying to solve. So this particular thing, the algorithm that we used, is roughly 120 years old. And so it's not cutting edge at all, but it serves the purpose of what we're trying to do here. And so what we do at the, at the um, upper left here is we've alerted a SOC manager, let's say, that there's something going on that requires their attention. And so the reason that there's just gray space everywhere else is there's nothing going on. So it's not green, because green says something maybe has improved. This is just the, the cloud color, because there's nothing to look at. And so we don't want to chase noise, draw people's attention away from what's important, those kinds of things. And so you'll only see it if there's action required. What you can then see at the upper right is why they got that signal. And so what it has to do with, there's creep going on there. And you can see it. And, and by the way, this was all based on actual um, OCSF data from the Amazon Security Lake preview. So this is real data coming out of the, that system. And so you could see that this, the number of security events were creeping upward here. And so the first alert, about halfway through the chart at the upper left there, happens almost in the middle of the, the line graph that you see at the upper right. And so they get an early alert there that if action were taken, the continual creep may have been prevented and certainly the spike at the end. And so it, it gives you that ability to do that. This is an augmentation of the kinds of anomaly detection that are built into the native products. And so we're not trying to compete in that area, but rather give you another view that if that didn't catch it, then this might. And so that's the idea here is for all these things to be complementary instead of giving you redundant things or competitive things. Um, and then at the, the bottom, uh, bottom left here, you could see very high level, what are the severities coming out of OCSF of the signals that were, or of the, um, the events that were driving the increase. And so you could see, you know, well, a lot of them are informational, but at the bottom you'll see there's a, a handful of higher critical ones there. And so then, again, using OCSF, we're able to map that back to what was the compliance status of those things, that, of the events that came through. And what you'll quickly find is they're kind of subtle, but all the way in here, the high and the critical map to things that were either failed the compliance check or weren't compliance checked at all. So it's kind of the worst case scenario that you've got things that are out of compliance and high severity. And so it gives that SOC manager a place to go dig in. And of course, the individual data underneath this is stored securely back in the customer's Amazon Security Lake. So from here, we would pass them back to their own Security Lake so that we don't store their data twice and things like that. And so we're not storing any of the detailed data within the Kindrel Bridge. We're storing anonymized and aggregated things that allow us to do analyses like this, but then give you the ability to flow back to your Security Lake to see the details underneath. The other use case quickly here that we want to talk about are some of the advantages that we bring to the table um, in addition to our, our expertise. And that is because of the size we are as a managed service provider, we're able to do things like have visibility to how a certain geography or a certain industry may be behaving in the, in the space that this customer is worried about. And so you can see at the top there, this happens to be an Indian healthcare company that, that we're talking about here. And it's a, a fictitious one, just for the record. And so what you can see at the upper left is the, the healthcare industry. And so they're bobbing along, not a lot going on. And then in the industry, we're starting to see an increase in security events. And then on the right, you see the country. So in this case, India. And you can see something similar, not quite as pronounced, but the combination of India and security events, you can see, would, would really amplify that signal. And so at the bottom here, we have threat intel. And so start about here, we get into the, the same time frame we're seeing here. There's some, some past history there. But you'll see right here, 
we see a similar blip to what you're seeing here. And so at that point, we can combine threat intel with the data that we're seeing and give that customer not only what we're seeing, but why it may be, who the threat actors may be, those kinds of things, so that they can take more informed action. And so th this is all made possible, um, again, by, by the team that I manage, as well as um, another team that we work with in our chief technology office, who helps build some of the integration that we've done here. But the key that we bring to the table, really, again, this is all AWS technology, all the way from the Amazon Security Lake to where we're storing it in the Kindle Bridge Data Lake is AWS-based, to QuickSight, QuickSight Q, AWS technology from end to end. But really, the Kindle expertise is the, the difference maker here. That in terms of qualifications of the people that are working on your security data here, um, everyone on my team has both professional and product certifications for everything they work on. And we also have things that are more domain knowledge type things. And so, for example, um, we've got about a quarter of the Kindrel certifications in, the, in Open Fair, if you're familiar with that, the Factor Analysis of Information Risk. And so one of the things that we're working toward here aspirationally is for all of the risks to be quantified, dollarized. So that if you come in and take a look at here are your issues that you may have in your environment, if you provision a new service, here is the dollarized reduction in risk that you can expect. So that's an aspirational goal as to where we have an, a vision of taking this. And so these are all under development. But that's the kind of expertise that's working on it. Deep technical expertise in data science and good domain expertise in information security, specifically in risk and in risk quantification. So to bring it all together here and just summarize it, this is really the flow, as we mentioned. So AWS technology from left to right, um, multiple customers, Amazon Security Lakes, the data is normalized by OCSF, the standard. It's also anonymized and aggregated before we bring it into Kindle Bridge. So the data ingestion happens here. It's stored in an AWS data lake. We then will do algorithms of various kinds, some machine learning, some more simple like I showed you. Um, and then the analytics get sent out into QuickSight dashboards. And so in, while it's in the bridge, it can be enriched with things that we have a unique perspective and a unique ability to do. And that's around the industry, the geography, threat intel, risk expertise, those kinds of things. And so the end product is customers who have Amazon Security Lake can then provision the Kindle services and add our expertise to that. And again, quite a compelling, uh, compelling case in order to run your, your security operations in a smarter way with the Kindle operation, security operations platform with AWS. And with that, uh, you can connect with experts. Our booth is kind of at the back left as you face this way. Um, you can reach us at the URL, scan the QR code. This is our security and resiliency website. If you scan that, you'll go out to that specifically. Um, we've got lots of experts back there. I'll be in the booth at, from 2 to 4 tomorrow, or you're welcome. I'll, I'll hang around here if anybody has questions and they'd like to talk after the, after the talk here. But I appreciate all of your time. Really excited about this. We just came out of POC, so we're developing the MVP now. The way that works when you partner with AWS, and this is a co-development initiative, is that we work backwards. And so we're going to have real customers involved during MVP to make sure they're able to validate everything we do, that they get value out of it. And so we're working toward that, that MVP now, and we're looking to release that by the end of the year. And with that, I'll wrap. I appreciate all of your time. Thank you, everybody.